So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, pinning for a any cranial procedure, but we're going to start with doing a traditional terional type pinning. So in this patient, we're going to be doing a uh, left terional approach for, say, a ruptured left pecom aneurysm. So we're going to start by positioning the patient on the bed. We're going to get the patient on the bed. We're going to make sure all the eminences are padded. So we're going to put a pillow under his knees and getting him ready. It also will often help if you get the patient in what we call a beach chair position. So if you get that back up and the knees down, that will also be more comfortable for the patient and ultimately more comfortable for the surgeon. Make sure you put some foam underneath the ankles as well. In this case, they don't touch, but they usually do. Okay. And is there, there are two ways to pin. One is with the headrest on, and one is with the adapter on. So we're going to start by pinning with the headrest on. So in pinning, especially for a skull-based procedure, the things to think about are one, where is your incision, and are your pins going to be optimized in a position that you're going to be able to get the head um, to where nothing's going to be in the way and you have the right surgical corridor or plane. So for a terional, we're going to start, say this is the left side, we're going to visualize our incision coming along here. So our single pin is usually going to come along the mid-pupillary line above the contralateral side to here, and then our two pins are going to be along the bony prominence of the occiput in good hard bone. A pitfall that often residents will make is slipping too far down. And this, as the pins get farther and farther off tangent of the skull, they will slip farther and farther down, especially in big, more muscly people. So you want to make sure you're seated against a good hard bone. They're far enough away uh, from your incision to where they're not going to crimp or distort the skin when you're trying to close. And then once everything's seated well, we we'll bring everything together. And then you'll notice there's a point right here. This is your pressure gauge, and you will turn this until it has three lines or a pressure of 60. All right? So now that he's firmly pinned, we're going to continue to support the head, and then we'll lift the head up by the pins and remove the head of the bed. So again, we tighten everything down. We want four tight screws, both on the adapter and to the bed itself. Often you're doing these upside down, so if you think righty tighty, lefty loosey, it'll be reversed from that. All right, Keon, go ahead. That's good. And I just want to show you a few more things. One is this lock unlock feature. So anytime, uh, if possible, you want to maintain the, the, the head rocker, that's the two prongs in the, usually back here, you want that maintained in the locked position, okay? Once they're unlocked, it can move like this, which can facilitate, uh, you know, if you're having to pin at a different angle, but once they're in pins to maintain better control of the head, you usually want them locked, okay? So we already discussed going to three dashes or 60 pounds of pressure here. Another thing we wanted to talk about was getting these teeth correctly engaged. So Michelle, if you can loosen us up there. I'm going to show on this one because it's easier to see, but obviously I would usually loosen the other one first. So when you're screwing it in, well, <laughs> that is correctly engaged. See how the teeth all lock up nicely? If it is incorrectly engaged, it's not going to screw together correct, and it's not going to lock in. See how there's gaps in between them there? That's not right. So you want to, if that's happening, you just loosen it up, kind of wiggle it a little bit, and then try again and let it lock into position. This. Okay. Um, another thing we wanted to mention was the importance of having uh, the pins done in this configuration, because as Carl was showing, you could rotate it so that they would be like this instead of like this. And in that case, um, it would be possible for the head to slip out of the pins if there was pressure on it, like when you're, um, uh, when you're, when you're actually operating. Whereas for this, if you apply downward pressure, the bottom pin will sort of maybe rotate out and the top pin will engage more and the head won't fall out. Um, another thing is if you want to use neuro navigation for these cases, you cannot have uh, the connection be on the outside. It has to be on the inside because your neuro navigation probe will attach to the outside. So actually, if you hold the head here, I'll show how that's done. Actually, do you want to sure. go ahead and loosen them all up in the correct order? All the way, all the way. Yeah, all the way up. Yeah, turn them all the way up. Mm -hmm. oh, feels like it's out. Okay. Yeah, the correct order would be the other way. But make sure all the joints are loose so that we can get it in the correct degree. All right. So, you, exactly. You can see once they're all loose, you can turn that around. So now you want to match that up to the inside part, which looks the same as the outside part. Again, all the teeth will need to be aligned. And you can slide you can slide this whichever way you need to. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. Keep it locked in. And then the last point is down here on the bottom, um, which you can see there's a little screw here. If this is too tight, um, when you go to push this lever in, you may not be able to get it all the way. And if it's too loose, it may not lock in all the way. So you want to make sure that this is the appropriate tightness, which in this case it seems to be. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.